Hi guys, welcome to Lipstick and Lipo, your unfiltered guide to plastic surgery by two board certified plastic surgeons. I'm Dr. Smitta in New Jersey, and I've got Dr. Amalfi with me, my co-host up in Rochester. Hi, Ash. Hi, Girelli. We're excited. How this is a great topic. You? I I'm know. We've so got an good. awesome topic today. We've got a slew of these episodes, actually. We're breaking down all the recovery sort of things that you need to know for all of the big plastic surgery procedures. And today we're going to cover lipo, our namesake. I love it. It's like our recovery series. Recovery is like such yeah. a hot topic. We had we had a recovery after breast augmentation episode and it without a doubt has the most views. And so we are bringing mm -hmm. you an entire recovery series to talk about recovery after all of our major plastic surgery procedures. So liposuction it is. And again, yeah, this is our namesake, right? This is super fun. The mm -hmm. most common plastic surgery procedure performed year over year. Is it like that in your practice too? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I think what's so great about liposuction too is that there's so much, you know, you can do little small areas like your bra yeah. bulge or your, or, you know, that double chin, or you could really do full trunk, like abdomen, back, legs. I mean, the whole work. So it can get whole pretty liposuction. Yeah. Yeah. So it can get pretty extensive. Um, but in general, you know, the overall recovery is similar, right? We just sort of magnify it with the bigger procedures. Yeah. Um, but what would you say is the sort of biggest thing that we talk about a lot with recovery and think, you know, the biggest thing to do after lipo and all of that stuff? I mean, really the only rule after liposuction is that you want to wear compression because compression mm -hmm. is going to help smooth your result. Um, it's going to decrease swelling, help you recover quicker and faster. And that's really the only thing you have to do. And that's kind of the beauty of liposuction is there's not a lot of rules. I mean, that's kind of what I tell right. patients. It's kind of like listen to your body. Would you agree like the number one thing, Smita, is, uh, yeah. is compression? A hundred percent. And yeah. I, I always explain it because it's, it is annoying, right? Especially if you're getting yeah. liposuction in these bigger areas over the summer where it's already hot and then you're wearing these like not stretchy material yes. compression garments. But I always tell patients, um, you know, liposuction, at the end of the day, your result is sort of two things, right? It's what we do in liposuction where we take out the fat, but then the rest is your body and how quickly and how much your skin shrinks back up, right? Right. Because it doesn't shrink right away. It shrinks over time. Well, so after liposuction, you're going to be very swollen and that swelling essentially keeps that skin stretched. So the yeah. quicker we can get that swelling to go down the quicker that skin shrinks and the quicker you get your results. So usually That's once I tell amazing. people that, they're like, okay, I'm, I'm done, in. you know? Yeah, I'm in. Exactly. I'll wear it all year round. Yeah, I mean, if you tell anyone that they're going to do something and as much as it's annoying or hot or whatever, if it's going to improve their result, then it's really important and they understand. You know, you know, swelling yeah. is, it, it actually makes it all a little bit more miserable. And I think people just feel better if, we're mm -hmm. controlling their swelling too. Like it, everything just feels better when you're wearing compression after liposuction and yeah. and you kind of know it's doing something good because if you feel better, then you realize like, okay, this is actually helping my body heal. And mm -hmm. that's what's so cool about this is that's it. Like that's the only thing you have to do is wear compression. There's really not a lot of other restrictions. Do you give people any other restrictions? I mean, I tell them the basic things, right? I mean, I think in general, the incisions are so small, right? We're talking about the tip of a pencil, like oh, eraser. Yeah. Um, so we're not having to worry about these huge incisions and scars and all of that. Um, right. But you still did have surgery, especially if it's a bigger procedure where you're under anesthesia. So you have to give your body time to sort of just recover from that. Um, so I do tell people to take it easy for those first few weeks. You know, you don't want to get surgery and then go, you know, run a marathon or a half marathon, right? You're right. not going to want to, but you still want to just give your body some time to recover. Um, but yeah, I mean, the compression is really the biggest thing, you know, yeah. um, yeah. that's really it. And, and, you know, the swelling, like you said, I always tell people, it's like, when you're really, really bloated and you feel terrible and disgusting, <laughs> it's yeah. like that times a million, you exactly. know, so you want that swelling to go away. That's a good go way to away. put it. I love yeah. that. Everyone feels tell, awful gonna, when they're bloated, right? I'm going <laughs> to like, tell people that. You don't want that. that. And yeah. that, like everyone can relate to that, right? Like mm -hmm. that's such a good way to put it because it is kind of miserable and that's really exactly it. Like when you wear the compression and you don't have swelling, you feel amazing. 
Yeah. Um, I love that. Stealing it. Yeah. Well, so what do you, what do you tell people about pain? Um, I usually say it's, it's like intense the first couple of days and it's one of those, it's like, it's like a deep bruised feeling and Mm -hmm. it's sometimes hard to get up and get going. But then once you get moving and you're kind of moving that tissue, it doesn't hurt as much. It's just like that initial like shock of the movement, but moving is actually not going to hurt it. It's actually totally fine. And then I, Mm -hmm. I think the most annoying thing about liposuction is that it really lingers. So that bruised kind of feeling, it's like if you had like a huge bruise on your thigh or something and it takes forever to go away, like the skin Mm -hmm. color goes away, but underneath you can still feel that it has like that bruised feeling for a really long time, like almost for a couple of months. And that's, that's how liposuction is. Like it's, it's really a deep bruise to the tissue. And so even though the skin discoloration and the bruising goes away after a week or so, underneath there's still a lot of inflammation. And so it's gonna be really sore when you move those areas or you're running or on a bicycle and those areas are shaking. Um, that movement is going to make it still feel sore for kind of an annoyingly long period of time, like a couple of months. It's not terrible. I would just say it's more bothersome. Right. And I think also depending on where on your body we're doing it. So, you know, if you're doing, um, like your legs or anything like that, those areas tend to swell more and that bruising lingers more and it's sore more. Um, and it just, gravity, right? Everything just wants to go yeah, south. Yeah, pulls down. Um, yeah, if you do like hip dips or, um, you know, saddlebag deformity, things like that, um, it just lingers a little bit yeah. longer. But it's yeah, more I annoying. That. And that's why, I mean, I think that's why the compression is so good because it just yeah. gives you that support. Um, so you don't feel all of that, like, you know, every step you take, you don't feel that, like, impact and that soreness. Um, how, how long do you mm-hmm. have people wear compression, Smita? So, I mean, similar to the tummy tuck, I tell people six weeks, night and day, um, you know, so you could take it off if you need to take a break, but I tell them at least 20 hours out of the day, 21 hours out of the day. After that, I still tell them at night, definitely to wear it. Um, if they're going to be doing something active, they should put it on just because it does feel better. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I usually tell them for the three months to sort of do that. But at the end of the day, you know, the longer you can wear it, the better your the results better. are going to be. Yeah. So if you can tolerate it just do it because it it does make a huge difference yeah i do the same yeah i say like eight weeks and you know beyond Mm -hmm. that if you can still wear it and it feels better then do it you know you just you you know your body than than anyone else and if it feels Mm -hmm. good to wear it then it's only helping it can't hurt it's only helping and um and the, I mean, honestly, and that's really it. I mean, there's not a lot to talk about after liposuction because it really is so straightforward. I always tell mm-hmm. people, you know, like wear your compression. But other than that, there's not a lot of rules and you can't really mess it up unless right. you go and like gain a bunch of weight. Otherwise, you know, yeah. get back to a healthy lifestyle and you're going to be patient. Of this. And, yeah. yeah. And be patient because, you know, it, you know, like we've said on multiple episodes in the past, right? We, that skin needs to shrink. So that takes yeah. time. Um, so just sort of be patient, but you, you will see those results sort of, you know, each week, each month is going to be better and better. Yeah. Um, do you have patients do lymphatic massages? I do sometimes. I, I don't mm-hmm. really have like someone in network here that I like absolutely refer patients to, but a lot mm-hmm. of people ask about it. And so I am completely comfortable with it for them to do it in at home regimen and or to go mm-hmm. to a professional to do it. I think it certainly can't hurt and it can only help. So so yeah. I like it, but I don't have it as an absolute routine in my practice. How do you do it? Um, I usually, I mean, I love it. I think I can, especially in those larger areas. Yes. I mean, you know, if it's something like the neck, I, I will teach them how to do the massages. Themself. You know, that's something yeah. easy or if it's a bra bulge or something like that where they can do it on their own, um, then, you know, I'll teach them, just make sure that they do that. Um, But for those larger areas, like the tummy, the flanks, the extremities, I think it it does make such a difference because it does help with that swelling, but it just keeps things mobile, right? I mean, that's what the, some of the negative things about liposuction are if, you know, the skin scars down and then you get, you know, little contour irregularities. You want to move it you want to move it. And then sometimes that, that skin can almost feel like woody, you know, it gets hard after a while. 
um, especially with those larger area liposuction um, procedures. And so I think it just keeps everything nice and soft and helps with that swelling so patients feel a little bit better. Um, but those larger areas, you know, nobody wants to start mashing on their belly, you know, two weeks after surgery. So it's helpful to go to someone who's familiar with liposuction cases um, to sort of do yeah. that. Yeah, you want to move that skin because when we take that layer of fat out, we don't want the skin to, to scar down to the deeper tissue because then it can get like all wrinkly, especially if there's extra skin. You mm -hmm. want those two layers to be very, very mobile, just like our skin moves around now. We don't want it to scar in place. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Smith is talking about with like that massage, right? That you just want yeah. that tissue to move around so that it has the pliability of normal tissue and doesn't create all that extra scar. And, um, and, and so massaging that tissue around is, is really critical, um, mm -hmm. whether you're doing it yourself or having a professional do it for areas that are harder to reach or bigger. Right, yeah. I think it does make a, a huge, huge difference. But like you said, as long as somebody is doing something. Someone's moving um, the skin, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta move the it's skin. Gonna, and, yes. Yeah, and I think also, especially um, things that we don't really notice that we do, right? So if you do liposuction on the stomach, and then when you sit, you know, your waistband or a crease that you yes. normally make, like that can turn into a permanent thing just because now we've liposuctioned that area and they're swelling. So that's where it's sort of important to keep those little things in mind and just pay yes. a little extra attention as you're healing to keep things moving. And also, yeah. you know, make sure you're paying attention to the seams in your clothes and your waistbands yes. and things like that. Um, exactly. But other than that, I mean, it's, there isn't much to recovery for liposuction other than just giving it time and yeah, wearing your I mean, compression. No, one, yeah, again, no one ever says this wasn't worth it. Is it intense? Yeah, it's intense, but everyone does it again. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it. people keep on coming. The same people keep on coming back for more. Yep. So yep. you, you yep. quickly totally forget how, how painful yeah. the first couple of days were. Yeah, a couple of days and that's it. And then, that's you it. know, it's absolutely worth it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Well, this is a great topic. We've got more recovery episodes coming your way. So make sure you subscribe to Lipstick and Lipo. And we'll see you next week. See you soon, guys. Take care. See you soon. Bye. See ya. Bye.